Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, what is a fungus? We're all familiar with the toadstools you see growing around trees and the yeast we use to make bread, but these are only two examples of the diverse kingdom of fungi. They're a group of organisms completely separate from animals and plants, and they can be unicellular, like yeasts, or multicellular, like the mushrooms you might add to a stir-fry. Let's take a whistle-stop tour of some of the weird and wonderful groups of fungi and some of the interesting things that they do. First of all, how do they live? Fungi are similar to animals in the sense that they are heterotrophs. This means that, unlike plants, they can't make their own organic carbon-based compounds. Instead, like us, they have to consume them from their environment. And fungi absorb the nutrients they need from anything like rotting wood, leaf litter, that forgotten bag of grapes lurking at the back of the fridge, and even the skin between your toes. The fluffy mould you see on a slice of bread is the main body or mycelium of a fungus. The mycelium is made up of a dense network of thread-like structures called hyphae. These look a bit like plant roots, and they are how fungi take up nutrients, but unlike plant roots, they actively release into their local environment enzymes and other digestive chemical juices that break up compounds into simpler molecules that the fungal hyphae can then take up. And these hyphal networks operate on a massive scale. In fact, the mycelia of the fungi that produce the toadstools you can see in woodland can extend for hundreds of metres beneath the soil. But working on its own is not always enough for a fungus to extract all of the nutrients it needs. Instead, many team up with plants, and in some cases, without this relationship, neither can survive without the other. These interactions are known as mycorrhizae. The plant swaps some of the carbohydrates produced through photosynthesis in return for phosphorus, magnesium and copper collected by the fungi from the soil. Around 90% of all families of plants form these sort of mycorrhizal relationships, from crops like wheat and barley to orchid flowers to trees like birch and beech. It's even been suggested that without their mutual interactions, neither plants nor fungi could have colonised the land. So what are toadstools and mushrooms? These are the fungal fruiting bodies. They release spores that can either germinate on their own to form a new individual by asexual reproduction, or the spores can join together to form a new organism, thereby reproducing sexually. Having the flexibility to reproduce asexually or sexually is a great advantage that allows fungi to exploit stable conditions or adapt to changing ones. And of course, some of these toadstools are also edible. Species like morels, chanterelles and giant puffballs, as well as the cultivated field mushrooms you buy in the supermarket, all make excellent additions to the dinner table. And though I wouldn't advise eating some species because of the psychedelic effects they may have, fungi are an important part of food and drink production in other ways too. Corn is made from the fusarium fungus, and a form of aspergillus mould is essential for soy sauce and miso production in Japan. Cheese lovers' lives wouldn't be the same without moulds in the penicillium genus, like P. glaucum, to make the blue veins and pungent odours of blue cheeses. And of course, we use yeast to turn grains and water into bread, and grains, fruit or even potatoes into alcohol. Yeasts are single-celled fungi that reproduce asexually by budding. The next generation simply bud off the parent, rather than releasing spores like the toadstools we met earlier. When the yeast feeds off maltose sugar in flour, malt or mashed fruit, it produces carbon dioxide, plus water if there's plenty of oxygen, and alcohol if there's no oxygen. Fungi aren't always good for us, though. The infection athlete's foot is caused by fungi that feed on the keratin in skin, nails and hair. Patients with AIDS are susceptible to potentially fatal fungal lung infections, and many women and men around the world have experienced the discomfort of thrush caused by the Candida albicans fungus. But they can also provide us with ways of fighting disease. In order to stop bacteria and other fungi from invading their patch, many fungi produce chemicals that can stop other microorganisms in their tracks, and it was by isolating these chemicals that we developed some of our most important antibiotics, 
perhaps the most famous fungi-derived drug, penicillin, was developed from Penicillium chrysogenum that's very closely related to the Penicillium fungi we met earlier used to make blue cheese. So, fungi are an extremely diverse kingdom of organisms. Many plants couldn't survive without them, they're important decomposers, and a night out at a restaurant wouldn't be the same without them. Something to think about next time you wrinkle your nose in disgust at a mouldy piece of bread. That's it for this time. To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye!